The first reading comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and then skipping to verse 22. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. We will read Psalm 8 responsively by verse. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5, starting with verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This ends the morning's reading. If you, are, if you are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. 
Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. I'd like to invite the children down for a minute. <laughs> All right, good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? How are you? Will you remind me of your name again? Addie. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do one, two, three, God loves Addie. Everyone ready? One, two, three, God loves Addie. Okay, so glad to have you with us today. So um, I'm actually going to sit down here for a minute uh, because I wanted, to show, I wanted to show you boys and girls. You might have to, let me sit in between, let me sit in between Brady and Nathan here. Let me see, in between you guys, I had a school for one week, and they, let me see, I wanted to show you, I know you all never get any screen time, right? But um, I wanted to show you this thing that I use uh, when I'm driving, um, so I can always know what the speed limit is and not go too fast, because I don't want to get any more speeding tickets when I'm at this phase of my life. But this is this little thing right here. You see this? It's called, it's called Waze. Uh, maybe, your, maybe your mom or dad or someone else uses Waze to, to, get, to get around. Who, where would you like to go this summer? Who wants to go somewhere cool? Where would you want to go? Oh. You can go anywhere. Where would you go, Addie? Florida. Florida? So let's put in, let's put in, should we put in the Epcot Center? Woo! Bay Lake, USA. That's, that's, that's Florida, right? 883 miles. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Boy, that would be a fun drive, right? Yeah, it's going to be, well, well, how long would it be to take an airplane? It would probably be a two-hour flight. Yeah, probably. Here it says it would be a, it would be a 14-hour drive. Oh, that sounds that's about gonna, right. Oh, there's going to be a lot of cops. Yeah, so a lot of police officers. So, well, anyhow, I just wanted to show you that because uh, it's pretty handy to use this type of device to get around. Oh, let me, if I can figure out how to turn this thing off. But um, these things are very handy. When I was learning to drive a long time ago, we didn't have things like Waze or GPS. How do you think we knew where to go? Maps. Yeah, right. Or you had to write down directions with paper and pen. Can you imagine that? Or if you wanted to go somewhere far away, you could just fly an airplane. Yeah, you could, you could do that too. Yeah, that's right. So, but my point is that Waze is good for telling us where to drive. But sometimes in life, we don't always know the way to go, right? I mean, getting from point A to point B is one thing if you're driving a car. But how do we know how to make the right choices in life, right? Um, how do we know when, how do we make the right decisions in our daily lives, right, Carly? I mean, these are all tough choices that we have to make. And, um, and so my point with all this is that in this morning's gospel story, um, Jesus said, I will send the Spirit, and the Spirit will guide you in all things, and so sometimes I like to remember that even if I'm confused, if I don't know what to do, that I can take a moment, pray, maybe read the Bible a little bit, and I am reminded that the Holy Spirit that Jesus has sent is guiding us in life, right? Um, and so we will know which way to go when we come to a fork in the road. So thankfully, we can all be grateful that God has given us this Holy Spirit. Let's say a quick prayer together, okay? So dear God, I thank you for these wonderful children. 
Um, I pray that you will be with them all summer um, and watch over them and help them to have a fun summer. Help them to not forget all the knowledge and learning they have achieved over the past school year, uh, but help them to rejoice always in the world that you have made. We are so glad that Addie could be here with us this day. And we pray that for all of us, your Holy Spirit may guide us all the days of our lives. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, boys and girls. You can go back to your, go back to your seats now. So. <laughs> well, as, uh, as Jay mentioned last week, Pastor Miriam Nicholson was here. Uh, we are so grateful to have her um, here locally um, in, in New Bloomfield, and very big thanks to her for helping out as I was away for the drill weekend. I just wanted to mention very quickly that, uh, you know, thank you always. As I always like to say, it's, it's not so much about me um, being out there and serving with the, the Navy or the Marine Corps, uh, but it's about our congregation um, extending its ministry beyond this community and beyond the walls of our own church. So whenever I have one of these drill weekends, someone at some point always comes up to me and says, hey, chaps, you got a minute. <laughs> I really need to talk to you. And um, so that couldn't happen if uh, congregations like Good Shepherd didn't make that sacrifice and weren't willing to call pastors that also served in the reserve. So uh, thank you all for your flexibility. Um, It was funny, on uh, on Sunday afternoon, uh, the battalion, 4th Combat Engineer Battalion, said goodbye. Uh, My my billet is coming to an end with them at the end of this month. Um, I have not yet received my next reserve assignment, uh, but the executive officer, as he was saying goodbye, he said, you know, most of us have the weekends off, right? <laughs> he was talking to the other officers in the room. Most of us have the weekends off, but, you know, the chaplains, they are members of the clergy. They, they work every weekend, and so we appreciate uh, them for, for being here as well. But I just wanted to share that with you all and thank you for, again, supporting this this important ministry that that we do together. Today is a very unusual Sunday in the church year, Holy Trinity Sunday. Um, It is the only Sunday in the church year that is not dedicated to a teaching or event in the life of Jesus but rather focuses on a doctrine of the church, a teaching of the church, this mysterious doctrine. I'm going to use that word a couple times today, mysterious. (laughs) This mysterious doctrine of the Holy Trinity, Um, this belief that is perhaps um, has been written on extensively by the world's most brilliant and talented theologians and pondered and reflected on over the centuries uh, even from the early days of the church up till today, um, this, the three in one, the one in three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, and so today, following um, one week after Pentecost, we, we pause for a moment to think about what this doctrine means for our lives and how we as Christians live in to this doctrine which proclaims a relational God, um, a God that existed Uh, from the beginning of time, but even before anything was created, God was a relational being. Uh, There was a community uh, within God's own being, even before God created the heavens and the earth. I think if most of us had to take a written test, you know, if we had to, even our confirmation students uh, who who did so well this past year, (laughs) I, I wonder if we wouldn't make a few mistakes if we tried to, you know, explain in great detail what the Holy Trinity is. And that's okay. Um, We like, as as human beings, we like to know, we like to have knowledge, we like to know all things. I was just talking with someone this morning and saying that one of the the effects of having uh, cell phones constantly is that we're always looking up on Google or on Wikipedia. We always want to get the answer to some question right away. Um, But the Trinity is a mystery, right? Um, It's not something that we can easily have an answer to. It is something that we are invited to ponder and reflect on. And I think, like many Christians, um, when when I first learned about the Holy Trinity in Sunday school, 
I thought, now who came up with this crazy idea? <laughs> who had to make things so complicated and come up with this high in, you know, uh, wordy theology to confuse uh, the faith of average Christians? Um, but the truth is, that's not really how it happened. It was not something complicated that the theologians came up with and then gave it to the church, but rather from the beginning of the church, Christians had different experiences with God, right? Um, even from this day of Pentecost that, that Pastor Marion preached about last week with the tongues of fire descending on the apostles and they burst into this whole variety of languages and were empowered to go spread the gospel to, to every corner of the world. People had different experiences with God that they had trouble putting into words. They had trouble finding the language to express um, their different experiences. And so on the one hand, they realized that for this to be the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, there had to be only one God uh, because all throughout scripture, um, God is very clear that God is one. I am the only God, right? <laughs> the creator of everything. And yet when the day of Pentecost came, and as people experienced the power of the crucified and risen Jesus in the sacraments, in, in the water of baptism, in the bread and wine of Holy Communion, um, in the fellowship and forgiveness of, of believers, and in the community of the church, they began to realize that God was interacting with people in a way that is very much the same way that uh, three different people might react or interact with, with one person. I remember one pastor uh, was talking about a time when she was a young girl and she saw her grandmother taking a nap um, on, on the sofa and she was thinking to herself that this, this woman um, lying there before her was grandmother and also mom and also Dorothy, right? Dorothy was her name. And so some people in the family called her grandma, some people in the family called her mom, and some people, her husband, her brothers and sisters, called her her Dorothy, right? Same person, yet very different relationships with all these different people in her life. Um, and so as Christians, we are reminded um, and invited to celebrate that God interacts with us in very different ways, um, ways that are surprising, that are unexpected, and at times challenging. And for me, this is really what jumped out in this story this morning uh, from John chapter 16, that Jesus talks about, when I send the Spirit, the Spirit will guide you into all things. And I was thinking about, a little bit about the difference between um, leading and managing, right? I think if, this, if the Holy Spirit is going to lead us, is going, is going to guide us, should I say, if the Holy Spirit is going to guide us, I would think of that as leading. And I was reading a little bit this past week about the difference between managing and the difference between leading. And um, in his book, the, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey talks at length about the difference between managers and leaders. And he makes the point that both are very important, right? Both are very important. Um, an organization, a group, needs both managers and leaders to succeed. Um, and if we think about the Bible, every time the word manager is, is used, or some uh, synonym for the word manager, it's always in relation to a household, right? So the manager of the household, Jesus talks about the parable, the rich man puts the manager in charge of the house, right, while the, while the rich man is away. And the manager has all kinds of important jobs, making sure everyone is fed on time, making sure the bills are paid, right? Making sure the day-to-day -day tasks are, are carried out. And uh, so management is extremely important. But leadership is something entirely different altogether. Leadership is taking a group, um, an organization, an institution, and taking it to a new place, um, changing the way it does things, right? Um, so managers work within the paradigm, managers work within the system, but leaders change the paradigm 
and leaders change the system. So one, one example I read was like, imagine a group of people you know, hacking their way through a jungle, through a dense jungle with their, with their machetes, right? And so the, the person who's in the front of the line cutting the branches and everything and, and leading the group forward, that's the, that's the leader, right? And so the managers are the people behind the leader. They're sharpening the machetes. They're writing some notes on the best ways to, to, <laughs> to chop plants. The managers are, are uh, teaching a class on how to build up arm strength so you're more efficient at hacking, the, hacking the, um, the branches and everything in front of you. Both of those are very important. But so the leaders are you know, the ones leading the way. And uh, then he makes the point that the leaders are the ones who climb the tree. And every once in a while, they say, we're in the wrong jungle. <laughs> and the managers say, but we're making such great progress, <laughs> right? Um, and so this morning, as I've been reflecting about what Trinity Sunday means for us today, I think that when the Spirit guides us, when the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us, it is taking us to a new place and oftentimes having us do things that are outside our normal way of thinking, right? Having us do things that are challenging. Um, I think this is why Jesus says, I have many things to you that I'd like to say to you, but you can't bear them right now. You can't bear them right now, right? Um, but the Holy Spirit will lead you in all things. Uh, because we get, stuck, we get stuck in a rut. You know, um, you, you, we, we know uh, Jesus, for example, told, um, told his disciples um, that the blind cannot lead the blind, Right? or both will fall into a ditch. I've heard this before. But then someone said, well, that's true, but the blind can lead the blind if they're walking down a familiar path. <laughs> right? The blind can lead the blind if you're stuck in a rut. And that is the truth, is that if we are just going back and forth in the same place, um, we don't need vision. Uh, we don't need leaders to guide us into a new way but every, every so often, someone has, to, someone has to climb up a tree and make sure we're in the right jungle <laughs> to make sure that we're really on path for our mission, um, which is spreading the gospel in our community and beyond. Right now, of course, all around the world, it is challenging times um, with this 40-year high inflation um, that we are struggling with. Um, just the other day, I was looking at our a little spreadsheet for, for the month of May, and I saw that my family spent like $1,000 on food in the, in the month of May, $1,000. That's not even counting the restaurants. And, uh, you know, we weren't doing anything really different than what we've been doing the past several years, but I thought, my goodness, it used to be like 600 bucks, now it's like $1,000 a month that we're spending on food. You know, and this is just one of the many challenges that we face. Um, as a church, as the body of Christ in this place, we might wonder, how can we find our way back following this global pandemic? How can we find the way forward with record high inflation that's affecting our ability to uh, have programs that reach out into the community to share the good news of Jesus, right? How can we find our way back? Um, how can we find the way forward with the, with the political divisions and social divisions in our society. Certainly, I do not have the answers to all these questions. But as we continue to be the church, we can rejoice and be glad that the triune God, the creator, the redeemer, the sanctifier, the one who makes us holy and continues to fill us with the Holy Spirit, continues to be with us, um, continues to lead us and guide us. Um, sometimes we try to be managers a little bit too much and keep things the way they are. Managing is important. But my invitation for all of us uh, over the summer and the weeks to come as we adjust to new routines and new schedules is to pray um, earnestly and honestly that God will open our hearts and minds so that the Holy Spirit may lead us, so that the triune God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, might do, yet again, a new thing among us.
May God bless you all. I hope your summer is off to a good start.